I've tried three different pairs of rear shocks on my Triumph Speed Twin. The factory KYBs on the left, the 450 euro YSS in the middle, and the 1250 Olins on the right. Question is, do you really get what you pay for? Does more expensive mean better? Or is it all just hype? As soon as I got my Speed Twin, I knew the factory rear shocks weren't going to cut it. They felt adequate at low speed, but pushing on exposed the basic components inside and the rear of the bike quickly felt sloppy and lazy. Such a shame, Triumph upgraded the front forks to some decent Marzocchis for the 2022 model, but left the rear shocks alone. Not only do these offer relatively mediocre performance, but what little adjustability they have, five clicks of preload only, involves removing the end can to gain access to the adjustment mechanism. The final nail in the coffin for me was the way they looked and felt. I'm not sure if you can see this on camera, but I can bend the upper bell housing between my fingers like a Coke can, and the whole thing just feels distinctly non-premium and lets the rest of the bike down. So I began researching some better aftermarket alternatives. Of course, I knew about the likes of Olin's and Nitron, but the idea of spending another 12 to 1500 euros, having just dropped 10 times that amount on the bike itself, really wasn't an option I was comfortable with. So I began looking at YSS. Located in Thailand, they have a pretty good reputation on user forums as manufacturers of mid-range suspension components. And I had used them before on a previous bike and had been satisfied with them, so I thought I'd give them a shot. I ordered a pair of these RZ362s from the manufacturer's European importer based in the Netherlands. Now the price on their website here seems to have increased a little bit because back in the autumn of 2021, I paid around 430 euros plus 20 euros shipping. Uh, but when they arrived, right off the bat, they looked and felt in my hands way nicer than the factory shocks and far more in keeping with the rest of the bike. Lots of solid quality milled alloy on show and overall just a more premium appearance. And in terms of weight gain, there's, not, uh, there's a not insignificant 1100 grams advantage over the original KYBs. There's enough adjustability, preload of course, but also an easily accessible thumb and finger rebound adjustment without having to remove the exhaust, and overall shock length adjustment, which meant that I could play with the ride height of the bike a little. Now, suspension components always need a few hundred miles in them to give it their best, so I waited until I'd done about 700 kilometers, 450 miles or so I think it was, and then I began the process of fine-tuning the shocks to suit me. I know I'm no, I'm no expert, but I followed the manual and the various online guides and managed okay. It was a bit trial and error, to be honest, but after a few attempts, I got the shocks to more or less where I wanted them. On the road, the difference was immediately clear. The bike was much tauter, much more planted in high-speed bends, and as much as I dislike the expression, more confidence inspiring. Comfort wise, they did initially feel a little bit firm, but on longer rides, this was something I came to appreciate and actually found I was able to ride about 30 minutes longer before needing a break compared to the factory shocks. And after a couple of months, they'd worn in nicely and were more compliant than the KYBs. So if they were so good, then why did I want to upgrade more to the Olins? Well, to be honest, it was a mixture of lusting after some Swedish gold, having had it on previous bikes, and thinking how nice a splash of colour would look against the new carbon black paint job, and curiosity. How much better could shops costing two and a half, three times the price actually feel? Now, regular viewers will know that I don't like adding colours to my bikes, so I ordered a pair of these TR923s with the black spring, as the yellow spring clashes with the gold cartridge and really doesn't go with the heritage appearance of the Speed Twin. And indeed Triumph seem to be of the same opinion because the special edition Breitling Speed Twin gets these exact same shocks. And if I'm totally honest, it was when I saw these photos that the lusting really began. Having looked at a few resellers, I eventually went with Classic Bike Race, located in Germany. Now, like many of my expat friends here in Portugal and in France where I used to live, 
I used to buy a ton of stuff from the UK, but Brexit has made this a nightmare with unforeseen taxes and inexplicable miscellaneous fees. So I just don't bother anymore, which is a shame both for me and the British economy. So I have to find resellers within the EU. And what really tipped the scales for me with Raish was the fact that they offer a custom setup of the shocks for no extra charge before they ship them to their customers. They asked me my weight, how often I took a pillion and whether I was looking for all out handling or greater comfort. When the shocks did arrive, they included this spec sheet detailing exactly how they'd set the sag, the preload, compression and rebound so that I have a starting point should I wish to make any further adjustments myself. It is all in German, but at least this validates the decision I made in school many years ago to study the language. I guess all knowledge has its moment. But certainly right out of the box, the Olins felt at least as well set up as the YSS had after much trial and error on my part. So, herzlichen Dank für die sehr gute Einstellung des Stoßdämpfer. As the name suggests, they offer a wide range of bespoke add-ons for the modern classics from Triumph and BMW. And in fact, they stock so many bits and pieces that I do try not to spend too much time browsing their site as it's almost impossible not to stumble across some gorgeous leather or solid aluminium accessory that I never knew I needed, but that I can't unsee. They also offer a full customization service and by the look of some of their finished machines, they seem to do a good job while staying within the limits of good taste, which is not always the case. I always feel that knowing when to stop should be the mantra of any good custom shop. Anyway, a few days later, the shops arrived from Germany, duly set up for me, as I said, 1250 euros including shipping, so nearly three times what I paid for the YSS shocks. And this is what you get. Two shocks, a maintenance manual and warranty card, and the fitting instructions, which you do need to carefully follow with regard to the specific washers and spacers that Olins provides. Installation wasn't particularly difficult, but the exhaust end cans on the Speed Twin do need to be removed to allow the bottom retaining bolts to be taken out and of course the bike needs to be properly supported front and rear with a trolley jack positioned in the center so as to be able to raise and lower the bike to align the top eye of the shock with the lug on the bike's frame. Now if you have a spring compress compressor or a specialized bike ramp of course then I'm sure you could get the job done more easily or quickly but I didn't so I made do with what I had. It's always a good idea to use thread lock for this kind of job and the bolts need to be torqued down to Triumph specifications. Other than that, it was pretty much plain sailing and including a couple of five minute breaks, the job took me about 90 minutes from beginning to end. Okay, so was it all worth it? Are the Olins better than the YSS? Well, the short answer is yes, they are. But contrary to what the price would suggest, but probably in line with what you're expecting, no, they're not three times better. I've been trying to think of how to explain the difference in feel for you, and the best I've come up with so far is that in terms of grip and confidence inspiringness, they're similar to the YSS, but they are better. Maybe only 10 to 15% better, at least in normal riding. When I took the bike up to the hills and pushed on a bit, the improvement was more pronounced. Now this could be psychological, of course. There's almost certainly a bit of a placebo effect going on here, knowing that some of the best suspension ex experts in the world have, so to speak, got your back. And I've certainly found that bottom clenching in some of the hairier bends has dropped. And I guess it's that kind of indefinable peace of mind that you're ultimately paying for with these high-end components. In terms of comfort, which is what I personally was more interested in, I'd say the improvement over the YSS shocks is more significant. I know it's very subjective, but I'd say the Olins are maybe 20% more comfortable than the YSS shocks. Imagine you've had your seat reupholstered and the guy put an extra layer of foam inside before closing everything up. That's what the Olins feel like after the YSS. A subtle but definite difference. Softer, more plush more expensive. Three times more comfortable? No, of course not, but it's always eking out the last 10% that cost the money. A Rolls-Royce Phantom costs about 20 times the price of a Ford Fiesta. Is it 20 times more comfortable? 20 times better? Probably not, but then, then again, how do you even measure 
comfort. So in conclusion, I'd say that the YSS shocks are a very worthwhile upgrade, one that I would definitely recommend. A good way to significantly improve your speed twins handling and, in my opinion, looks for less than 500 euros. The Olins are excellent, they're definitely better, and I can see, or rather feel, why they're so expensive. These numbers are pretty meaningless and subjective, but if I had to rate them in a nutshell, I'd say the YSS are 50% better than the factory shocks, and the Olins are 10 to 15% better than the YSS. I wouldn't waste a set of Olins on my Honda ADV 350 scooter, and it was undoubtedly overkill to put them on my Monkey, but I think the Speed Twin is worth the investment, and I'm glad I went for this second upgrade. If you have the funds available, then do it. You'll know you've got the best, and not just the second best. The only slight problem I have now, of course, is that the factory Marzocchi forks feel a wee bit unsophisticated. Oh dear, get your wallet out again, Rocket Man. Anyway, let me know in the comments whether you would feel comfortable blowing the price of an iPhone 13 Pro Max or Samsung S22 Ultra on a couple of springs. And as always, thanks for watching.